good wishes to all of you indian polity by n lakshmi kansa and the 14 topic of this book was center state relations now we are hearing it on a audio format the constitution of india being federal in structure divides all powers legislative executive and financial between the center and the states however there is no division of judicial power as the constitution has established an integrated judicial system to enforce both the central laws as well as state laws so the center and the state are supreme in their respective fields the maximum harmony and coordination between them is essential for the effective operation of the federal system hence the constitution contains elaborate provisions to regulate the various dimensions of the relations between the center and the states the center state relations can be studied under three heads legislative relations administrative relations financial rela- relations legislative relations article 245 to 255 in part 11 of the constitution deal with the legislative relations between the center and the states besides these there are some other articles dealing with the same subject like any other federal constitution the indian constitution also divides the legislative powers between the center and the states with respect to both the territory and the subjects of legislation further the constitution provides for the parliamentary legislation in the state field under five extraordinary situations as well as the center's control over state legislation in certain cases thus there are four aspects in the center states legislative relations vis territorial extent of central and state legislation distribution of legislative subjects parliamentary legislation in the state field and center's control over state legislation territorial extent of central and state legislation the constitution defines the territorial limits of the legislative powers vested in the center and the states in the following ways the parliament can make laws for the whole or any part of the territory of india the territory of india includes the states the union territories and any other area for the timing being included in the territory of india a state legislature can make laws for the whole or any part of the state the laws made by a state legislature are not applicable outside the state except when there is a sufficient nexus between the state and the object the parliament alone can make extra territorial legislation thus the laws of the parliament are also applicable to the indian citizens and their property in any part of the world however the constitution places certain restrictions on the plenary territorial jurisdiction of the parliament in other words the laws of parliament are not applicable in the following areas the president can make regulations for the peace progress and good government of the five union territories and andaman and nicobar islands lakshadweep dadra and nagar haveli daman and diu and ladakh a regulation so made has the same force and effects as an act of parliament it may also repeal or amend any act of parliament in relation to these union territories the governor is empowered to direct that an act of parliament does not apply to a scheduled area in the state or apply with specified modifications and exceptions the governor of assam may likewise direct that an act of parliament does not apply to a tribal area autonomous district in the state or apply with the specified modifications and exceptions the president enjoys the same power with respect to tribal areas autonomous districts in meghalaya tripura and mizoram distribution of legislative subjects the constitution provides for a three fold distribution of legislative subjects between the center and the states viz list 1 the union list list 2 the state list and list 3 the concurrent list in the 7th 7th schedule to parliament has exclusive powers to make laws with respect to any of the matters enumerated in the union list this list has at present 98 subjects originally 97 subjects like defense banking foreign affairs currency automatic energy insurance 
communication, interstate trade and commerce, census, audit, and so on. The state legislature has, in normal circumstances, exclusive powers to make laws with respect to any of the matters. Matters enumerated in the state list. This has at present 59 subjects, originally 66 subjects like public order, police, public health and sanitization, agriculture, prisons, local government, fisheries, markets, threats, gambling and so on. Both the parliament and state legislature can make laws with respect to any of the matters enumerated in the concurrent list. This list has at present 52 subjects, originally 47 subjects like criminal law and procedure civil procedure, marriage and divorce, population, control and family planning, electricity, labor welfare, economic and social planning, drugs, newspapers, books and printing press and others. The 42nd Amendment Act of 1976 transferred five subjects to concurrent list from state list that is education, forests, weights and measures, protection of wild, wild animals and birds and administration of justice constitution and organization of all courts except the supreme court and the high courts the parliament has power to make laws with respect to any matter for any part of the territory of india not included in a state even though that matter is one which is enumerated in the state list this provision has reference to the union territories or the acquired territories if any the 101st Amendment Act of 2016 has made a special provision with respect to goods and services tax. Accordingly, the Parliament and the State Legislature have power to make laws with respect to goods and services tax imposed by the Union or by the State. Further, the Parliament has exclusive power to make laws with respect to goods and services tax where the supply of goods or services or both takes place in the course of interstate trade or commerce. The power to make laws with respect to residuary subjects that is the matters which are not enumerated in any of the three lists is vested in the parliament. This residuary power of legislation includes the power to levy residuary taxes. From the above schemes, it is clear that the matters of national importance and the Matters which require uniformity of legislation national wide are included in the union list. The matters of regional and local importance and the matters which permit diversity of interests are specified in the state list. The matters on which uniformity of legislation throughout the country is desirable but not essential are enumerated in the concurrent list. Thus, it permits diversity along with uniformity. In U.S., only the powers of the federal government are enumerated in the constitution and the residuary powers are left to the state. The Australian constitution followed the American pattern of single enumeration of powers. In Canada, on the other hand, there is a double enumeration federal and provincial and the residuary powers are vested in the center. The Government of India Act of 1935 provided for a threefold enumeration with federal, provincial, and concurrent. The present constitution follows the scheme of this act but with one difference that is, under this act, the residuary powers were given neither to the federal legislature nor to the provincial legislature but to the governor general of India. In this respect, India follows the Canadian president. The constitution expressly secures the predominance of the union list over the state list and the concurrent list and that of the concurrent list over the state list. Thus, in case of overlapping between the union list and the state list, the former should prevail. In case of overlapping between the union list and the concurrent list, it is again the former which should prevail where there is a conflict between the concurrent list and the state list. It is the former that should prevail in case of a conflict between the central law and the state law on a subject enumerated in the concurrent list. The central law prevails over the state law, but there is an exception if the state law has been reserved for the consideration of the president and has received his assent, then the state law prevails in that state, but it would still be competent for the 
parliament to override such a law by subsequently making a law on the same matter. Parliamentary legislation in the state field. The above scheme of distribution of legislative powers between the center and the states is to be maintained in normal times, but in abnormal times, the scheme of distribution is either modified or suspended. In other words, the constitution empowers the parliament to make laws on any matter enumerated in the state list under the following five extraordinary circumstances. When Rajya Sabha passes a resolution, if the Rajya Sabha declares that it is necessary in the national interest that parliament should make laws with respect to goods and services tax or the or a matter in the state list, then the parliament becomes competent to make laws on that matter. Such a resolution must be supported by two-thirds of the members present and voting. The resolution remains in force for one year. It can be renewed any number of times but not exceeding one year at a time. The law cease to have effect on the expiration, expiration of six months after the resolution has ceased to be in force. This provision does not restrict the powers of a state legislator to make laws on the same matter, but in case of inconsistency between a state law and a parliamentary law, the latter is to prevail. During a national emergency, the parliament acquires the power to legislate with respect to good and goods and services tax or matters in the state list. While a proclamation of national emergency is in operation, the law becomes inoperative on the expiration of six months after the emergency has ceased to operate. Here also the power of a state legislator to make laws on the same matter is now not restricted. But in case of repugnancy between a state law and a parliamentary law, the law is to prevail. <coughs> Sorry. When states make a request, when the legislature of two or more states pass resolution requesting the parliament to enact laws on a matter in the state list, then the parliament can make laws for regulating that matter. A law so enacted applies only to those states which have passed the resolutions. However, any other state may adopt it afterwards by passing a resolution to that effect in its legislature. Such a law can be amended or repealed only by the parliament and not by the legislators of the concerned states. The effect of passing a resolution under the above provision is that the parliament becomes entitled to legislative with respect to a matter for which it has no power to make a law. On the other hand, the state legislator ceases to have the power to make a law with respect to that matter. The resolution opera operates as abdiction or surrender of the power of the state legislator with respect to that matter and it is place it entirely in the hands of parliament, which alone can then legislate with respect to it. Some examples of laws passed under the above provisions are Prize Competition Act 1955, Wildlife Protection Act 1972, Water Prevention and Control of Pollution Act 1974, Urban Land Sealing and Regulation Act 1976, and Transplantation of Human Organs Act 1994. To implement international agreements. The parliament can make laws on any matter in the state list of implementing the international treaties, agreements or conventions. This provision enables the central government to fulfill its international obligations and commitments. Some examples of laws enacted under the above provisions are United Nations Privileges and Immunities Act 1947. Geneva Convention Act 1960, Anti Hijacking Act 1982, and legislations relating to environment and trips. During President's rule, when the President's rule is imposed in a state, the Parliament becomes empowered to make laws with respect to any matter in the state list in relation to that state. A law made so by the Parliament continues to, to be operative. Even after the President's rule, this means that the period for which such a law remains in force is not uh, gotten minus with the duration of the President's rule, but such a law can be repealed or altered or re-enacted by the state legislature. 
centers control over state legislation besides the parliament's power to legislate directly on the state subjects under the exceptional situations the constitution empowers the center to exercise control over the state's legislative matters in the following ways the governor can reserve certain types of bills passed by the state legislature for the consideration of the president the president enjoys absolute veto over them bills on certain matters enumerated in the state list can be introduced in the state legislature only with the previous sanction of the president for example the bills imposing restrictions on the freedom of trade and commerce the center can direct the states to reserve money bills and other financial bills passed by the state legislature for the president's consideration during a financial emergency from the above it is clear that the constitution has assigned a position of superiority to the center in the legislative sphere in this context the sarkaria commission on center state relations 1983 to 88 observed the rule of federal supremacy is a technique to avoid absurdity resolve conflict and ensure harmony between the union and state laws if this principle of union supremacy is excluded it is not difficult to imagine its uh, deleterious results there will be every possibility of our two tier political system being stultified by interference strife legal chaos and confusion caused by a host of uh, conflicting laws much to the bewilderment of the common citizen integrated legislative policy and uniformity on basis issues of common union state concern will be stymied the federal principle of unity in diversity will be very much a casualty this rule of federal supremacy therefore is indispensable for the successful functioning to the functioning of the federal system administrative relations article 256 to 263 in part 11 of the constitution deals with the administrative relations between the center and the states in addition there are various other articles pertaining to the same matter distribution of executive powers the executive powers has been divided between the center and the states on the lines of the distribution of legislative powers except in few cases thus the executive power of the center extends to the whole of india to the matters on which the parliament has exclusive powers of legislation that is the subject enumerated in the union list and to to the exercise of rights authority and jurisdiction conferred on it by any treaty or agreement similarly the executive power of a state extends to its territory in respect of matters on which the state legislator has exclusive powers of legislation that is the subjects enumerated in the state list in respect of matters on which both the parliament and the state legislators have power of legislation that is the subjects enumerated in the concurrent list the executive powers rest with the states except when a constitutional provision or a parliamentary law specifically confers it on the center therefore a law on a concurrent subject to enacted by the parliament is to be executed by the states except when the continuous constitution or the parliament has directed otherwise articles related to center state legislative relations such as glance article number 245 extents of laws made by parliament and by the legislators of states article 246 subject matters of laws made by parliament and by the legislators of states article 246a special provision with respect to goods and services tax Article 247 power of parliament to provide for the establishment of certain additional courts Article 248 residuary powers of legislation Article 249 power of parliament to legislate with respect to a matter in the state list in the national interest Article 250 power of parliament to legislate with respect to any matter in the state list of a proclamation of emergency is in operation Article 251 inconsistency between laws made by parliament under articles 249 and 250 and laws made by the legislators of states Article 252 power of parliament to legislate for two or more states by consent and adoption of such a legislation by any other state 
Article 253 Legislation for giving effect to international agreements Article 254 Inconsistency between laws made by parliament and laws made by the legislature of states Article 255 Requirements as to recommendations and previous sanctions to be regarded as matters of procedure only obligation of state and the center the constitution has placed two restrictions on the executive powers of the states in order to give ample scope to the center for exercising its executive power in an unrestricted manner thus the executive power of every state is to be exercised in such a way as to ensure compliance with the laws made by the parliament and any existing law which apply in the state and as not to impair or prejudice the exercise of executive powers of the center in the state while the former lays down a general obligation upon the state the latter imposes a specific obligation on the state not to hamper the executive power of the center in both the cases the executive power of the center extends to giving of such directions to the state as are necessary for the purpose the sanction behind these directions of the center is coercive in nature thus article 365 says that where any state has failed to comply with or to give effect to any directions given by the center it will be lawful for the president to hold that a situation has arisen in which the government of the state cannot be carried on in a accordance with the provisions of the constitution it means that in such a situation the president's rule can be imposed in the state under article 356 center's direction to the states in addition to the above two cases the center is empowered to give directions to the states with regard to the exercise of their executive power in the following matters the construction and maintenance of means of communication declared to be of national or military importance by the state the measures to be taken for the protection of the railways within the states the provisions of advocate facilities for instructions in the mother tongue at the primary stage of education to children belonging to linguistic minority groups in the states and the drawing up and execution of the specified schemes for the welfare of the scheduled tribes in the state the coercive sanction behind the central directions under article 365 mentioned above is also applicable in these cases mutual delegation of functions the distribution of legislative powers between the center and the state is rigid consequently the center cannot delegate its legislative powers to the states and a single state cannot request the parliament to make a law on a state subject the distribution of executive powers in general follows the distribution of legislative powers but such a rigid division in the executive sphere may lead to occasional conflicts between the two hence the constitution provides for intergovernment delegation of executive functions in order to mitigate rigidity and avoid a situation of a deadlock accordingly the president may with the consent of the state government entrust the entrust to that government any of the executive functions of the center conversely the governor of a state may with the consent of the central government entrust to that government any of the executive functions of the state this mutual delegations of administrative functions may be conditional or unconditional the constitution also makes a provision for the entrustment of the executive functions of the center to a state without the consent of that state but in this case the delegation is by the parliament and not by the president the say law made by the parliament on a subject of the union list can confer powers and impose duties on a state or otherwise the conferring of powers and imposition of duties by the center upon a state irrespective of the consent of the state concerned notably the same thing cannot be done by the state legislature from the above it is clear that the mutual delegation of functions between the center and the state can take place either under an agreement or by a legislation while the center can use both the methods a state can use only the first method cooperation between the center and states the constitution contains the following provisions to secure cooperation and coordination between the center and the states the parliament can provide for the adjudication of any dispute or complaint with respect to the use 
distribution and control of waters of any interstate river and river valley the president can establish under article 263 an interstate council to investigate and discuss subject of um, common interest between the center and the states such a council was set up in 19, 1990 full faith and credit is to be given throughout the territory of india to public acts records and judicial proceedings of this center and every state the parliament can appoint an appropriate authority to carry out the purposes of the constitutional provisions relating to the interstate freedom of trade commerce and intercourse but no such authority has been appointed so far all india services like in any other federation the center and the state also have their separate public services called as the central services and the state services respectively in addition there are all india services ias ips and ifos the members of these services occupy top positions or key posts under both the center and the states and serve them by turns but they are recruited and trained by the center these services are controlled jointly by the center and the states the ultimate control lies with the central government while the immediate controls rests with the state governments in 1947 indian civil services ics was replaced by ias and the indian police ip was replaced by ips and were recognized by the constitution as all indian services in 1966 the indian forest service ifos was created as the third all india service article 312 of the constitution authorizes the parliament to create new all india services on the basis of a rajya sabha resolution to that effect each of these three all india services irrespective of their divisions among different states form a single services with common rights and status and uniform skills of pay throughout the country so the all india services violate the principle of federalism under the constitution by restricting the autonomy and patronage of the states they are supported on the ground that they help in maintaining high standard of administration in the center as well as in the states they help to ensure uniformity of the administrative system throughout the country and they facilitate liaison cooperation coordination and joint action on the issues of common interest between the center and the states while justifying the institutions of all india services in the constant assembly dr b r ambedkar observed that the dual polity which is inherent in a federal system is followed in all federations by a dual service in all federations there is a federal civil services and a state civil service the indian federation to a dual polity will have a dual service but with one exception it is recognized that in every country there are certain posts in its administrative setup which might be called strategic form from the point of view of for maintaining the standard of administration there can be no doubt that the standard of administration depends upon the calibre of the civil servants who are appointed to the strategic posts the constitution provides that without depriving the states of their rights to form their own civil services there shall be an all india service recruited on an all india basis with a common qualification uh, with a uniform scale of pay and members of which uh, alone could be appointed to those strategic posts throughout the union public service commissions in the field of public service commissions the center state relations are as follows the chairman and members of state public service commission though appointed by the governor of the state can be removed only by the president the parliament can establish a joint state public service commission jspsc for two or more states on the request of the state legislators concerned the chairman and members of the jspsc are appointed by the president the union public service commission upsc can serve the needs of a state on the request of the state governor and with the approval of the president the upsc assists the states when requested by two or more states in framing and operating schemes of joint recruitment for any services for which candidates possessing special qualifications are required integrated judicial system 
though india has a dual polity there is no dual system of administration of justice the constitution on the other hand established an integrated judicial system with the supreme court at the top and the state high courts below it this single system of courts enforces both the central laws as well as the state laws this is done to eliminate diversities in the remedial procedure the judges of a state high court are appointed by the president in constitution with the chief justice of india and the governor of the states they can also be transferred and removed by the president the parliament can establish a common high court for two or more states for example maharashtra and goa or punjab and haryana have a common high court relations during emergencies during the operation of a national emergency under article 352 the center becomes entitled to give executive directions to a state on any matter thus the state governments are brought under the complete control of the center so they are not suspended when the president's rule is imposed in a state under article 356 the president can assume to himself the functions of the state government and powers vested in the governor or any other executive authority in the state during the operation of a financial emergency under article 360 the center can direct the states to observe canons of financial property and can give other necessary directions including the reduction of salaries of persons serving in the state other provisions the constitution contains the following other provisions which enable the center to exercise control over the state administration article 355 imposes two duties on the center to protect every state against external aggression and internal disturbance and to ensure that the government of every state is carried on in accordance with the provisions of the constitution the governor of a state is appointed by the president he holds office during the pleasure of the president in addition to the constitutional head of the state the governor acts as an agent of the center in the state he submits periodical reports to the center about the administrative affairs of the state the state election commissioner though appointed by the governor of the state can be removed only by the president extra constitutional devices in addition to the above mentioned constitutional devices there are extra constitutional devices to promote cooperation and coordination between the center and the states these include a number of advisory bodies and conferences held at the central level the non constitutional advisory bodies include the niti ayog which succeeds the planning commission the national integrational council the central council of health and family welfare the central council of local government the zonal councils the north eastern council the central council of indian medicine the central council of homeopathy the transport development council the university grants commission and so on the important conferences held either annually or otherwise to facilitate central state consultation on a wide range of matters are as follow are as follows the governors conference presided over by the president the chief ministers conference presided over by the prime minister the chief secretary conference presided over by the cabinet secretary the conference of inspector general of police the chief justice conference president over by the chief justice of india the conference of vice chancellors the home ministers conference presides over by the central home minister the law minister conference presided over by the central law minister financial relations article 268 to 293 in part 12 of the constitution deal with central state financial relations besides this there are other provisions dealing with the same subject these together can be studied under the following heads articles related to central state administrative relations at a glance article number 256 obligation of states and the union Article 257 control of the union over states in certain cases Article 257 e assistance to states by de- deployment of armed forces or other forces of the union repealed Article 258 power of the union to confer powers etc on states in certain cases Article 258 e power of the states to entrust functions to the union Article 259 armed forces in states in part b of the first schedule repealed article 
jurisdiction of the union in relation to territories outside india article 261 public acts records and judicial proceedings article 262 adjudication of disputes relating to waters of interstate rivers or river valleys article 263 provisions with respect to an interstate council allocation of taxing powers the constitution divides the taxing powers between the center and state in the following way the parliament has exclusive power to levy taxes on subject enumerated in the union list which are 13 in number the state legislature has exclusive power to levy taxes on subjects enumerated in the state list which are 18 in number there are no tax entire in the concurrent list in other words the concurrent jurisdiction is not available with respect to tax legislation but the 101st amendment act of 2016 has made an exception by making a special provision with respect to goods and services tax this amendment has conferred concurrent power upon parliament and state legislatures to make laws governing goods and service tax the residuary power of taxation that is the power of impose taxes not enumerated in any of the three lists is vested in the parliament under this provision the parliament has imposed gift tax wealth tax and expenditure tax the constitution also draws a distinction between the power to levy and the collective tax and the power to appropriate the proceeds of the tax so levied and collected for example the income tax is levied and collected by the center but its proceeds are distributed between the center and the states further the constitution has placed the following restrictions on the taxing powers of the states a state legislature can impose taxes on professions trades callings and employees employments but the total amount of such taxes payable by any person should not exceed 2500 per annum a state legislature is prohibited from imposing a tax on the supply of goods or services or both in the following two cases where such supply takes place outside the state and where such supply takes place in the course of import or export further the parliament is empowered to formulate the principle for determining when a supply of goods or services or both take places outside the state or in the course of import or export a state legislature can impose tax on the consumption or sale of electricity but no tax can be imposed on the consumption or sale of electricity which is consumed by the center or sold to the center or consumed in the construction maintenance or operation of any railway by the center or by the concerned railway company or sold to the center or the railway company for the same purpose a state legislature can impose a tax in respect of any water or electricity stored generated consumed distributed or sold by any authority established by parliament for regulating or developing any interstate river or river valley but such a law to be effective should be reserved for the president's consideration and receive his assent distribution of tax revenues the 80th amendment act of 2000 and the 101st amendment act of 2016 have introduced major changes in the scheme of the distribution of tax revenues between the center and the states the 80th amendment was adapted to give effect to the recommendations of the 10th finance commission the commission recommended that out of the total income obtained from certain central taxes and duties 29% should go to the states this is known as the alternative schemes of devolution and came into effect r- retrospectively from april 1 1996 this amendment has brought several central taxes and duties like corporation tax and customs duties at par with income tax taxes on income other than agriculture income as as far as their constitutionality mandated sharing with the states is states is concerned the 101st amendment has paved the way for the introduction of a new tax regime 
that is goods and services tax gst in the country accordingly the amendment conferred concurrent taxing powers upon the parliament and the state legislature to make laws for living gst on every transaction of supply of goods or services or both the gst replaced a number of in indirect taxes levied by the union and the state governments and is intended to remove rascading effect of taxes and provide for a common national market for goods and services the amendment provided for subsuming of various central indirect taxes and levies such as central excise duty additional excise duties excise duty levied under the medicinal and toilet preparation excise duties act 1955 service tax additional customs duty commonly known as countervailing duty special additional day of duty of customs and uh, central uh, surcharges and cesses so far as they related to the supply of goods and services similarly the amendment uh, provided for sub subsuming of uh, state value added tax sales tax entertainment tax other than the tax levied by the local bodies central sales tax levied by the center and collected by the states octroi and entry tax purchase tax luxury tax taxes on lottery betting and gambling and state surcharges and cesses in so far as they related to the supply of goods and services further the amendment deleted article 268a as well as entry 92c in the union list both were dealing with service tax they, they were added earlier by the 88th amendment act of 2003 the service tax was levied by the center but collected and appropriated by both the center and the states after the above two amendments that is 80th amendment and 101st amendment the present position with respect to the distribution of tax revenues between the center and the states is as follows taxes levied by the center but collected and appropriated by the states article 268 this category includes the stamp duties on bills of exchange checks promissory notes policies of insurance transfer of shares and others the proceeds of these duties levied within any state do not form a part of the consolidation fund of india but are assigned to that state taxes levied and collected by the center but assigned to the states article 269 the following taxes fall under this category taxes on the sale or purchase of goods other than newspapers in the course of interstate trade or commerce taxes on the consignment of goods in the course of interstate trade or commerce the net proceeds of these taxes do not form a part of the consolidated fund of india they are assigned to the concerned states in accordance with the principles laid down by the parliament levy and collection of goods and services tax in course of interstate trade or commerce article 269a the goods and service tax gst on supplies in the course of interstate trade or commerce are levied and collected by the center but this tax is divided between the center and the states in the manner provided by parliament on the recommendations of the gst council further the parliament is also authorized to formulate the principles for determining the place of supply and when a supply of goods or services or both takes place in the course of interstate trade or commerce taxes levied and collected by the center but distributed between the center and the states article 270 this category includes all taxes and duties referred to in the union list except the following duties and taxes referred to in articles 268 269 and 269a mentioned above surcharge on taxes and duties referred to in article 271 mentioned below and any cess levied for specified purposes the manner of distribution of the net proceeds of these taxes and duties is prescribed by the president on the recommendation of the financial commission surcharge on certain taxes and duties for purpose of the center article 
the parliament can at any time levy the surcharges on taxes and duties referred to in article 269 and 270 mentioned above the proceeds of such surcharges go to the center exclusively in other words the states have no share in these surcharges however the goods and services tax gst is exempted from this surcharge in other words the surcharge cannot be imposed on the gst taxes levied and collected and retained by the states these are the taxes belonging to the states exclusively they are enumerated in the state list and are 18 in number these are land revenue taxes on agriculture income duties in respect of succession to agriculture land estate duty in respect of agriculture land taxes on lands and buildings taxes on mineral rights duties of excise on alcoholic liquors for human consumption opium indian hemp and other narcotic drugs and narcotics but not including medicinal and toilet preparations containing alcohol or narcotics taxes on the consumption or sale of electricity taxes on the sale of petroleum crude high speed diesel motor spirit commonly known as petrol natural gas aviation turbine fuel and alcoholic liquor for human consumption but not including sale in the course of interstate trade or commerce or sale in the course of international trade or commerce of such goods taxes on goods and passengers carried by road or inland waterways taxes on vehicles taxes on animals and boats tolls taxes on professions trades callings and employments capitation taxes taxes on entertainments and amusements to the extent levied and collected by a panchayat or a municipality or a regional council or a district council stamp duty on documents except those specified in the union list and fees on the matters enumerated in the state list except the court fees distribution of non tax revenues the center the receipts from the following form the major sources of non tax revenues of the center post and telegraphs railways banking broadcasting coinages and currency central public sector enterprises asset and labs and others the states the receipts from the following form the major sources of non tax revenues of the states irrigation forests fisheries state public sector enterprises estate and labs and others grants in aid to the states besides the sharing of taxes between the central and the states the constitution provides for grants in aid to the states from the central resources there are two types of grants in aid with statutory grants and discretionary grants statutory grants article 275 empowers the parliament to make grants to the states which are in need of financial assistance and not to every state also differs the sums may be fixed for different states these sums are charged on the consolidated fund of india every year apart from this general provision the constitution also provides for specific grants for promoting the welfare of the scheduled tribes in a state or for raising the level of administration of the scheduled areas in the state including the state of assam the statutory grants under article 275 both general and specific are given to the states on the recommendation of the finance commission discretionary grants article 282 empowers both the center and the states to make any grants for any public purpose even if it is not within their respective legislative com- competence under this provision the center makes grants to the states these grants are also known as discretionary grants the reason being that the center is under no obligation to give these grants and the matter lies within its discretion these grants have a twofold purpose to help the state financially to fulfill plan targets and to give some leverage to the center to influence and coordinate state action to effectuate the national plan other grants the constitution also provided for a third type of grants in aid but for a temporary period thus a provision was made for grants in lieu of export duties on jute and jute products of the states of assam bihar orissa and west bengal these grants were to be 
given for a period of 10 years from the commencement of the constitution these sums were charged on the consolidated fund of india and were made to the states on the recommendation of the finance commission goods and services tax council the smooth and efficient administration of the goods and services tax gst requires a cooperation and coordination between the center and the states in order to facilitate this consultation process the 101st amendment act of 2016 provided for the establishment of a goods and services tax council or the gst council article 279 a empowered the president to constitute a gst council by an order the council is a joint forum of the center and the states it is required to make recommendations to the center and the states on the following matters the taxes cesses and surcharges levied by the center the states and the local bodies that would get merged in gst the goods and services that may be subjected to gst or exempted from gst model gst laws principles of levy apport apportionment of gst levied on supplies in the course of interstate trade or commerce and the principles that govern the place of supply the threshold limit of turnover below which goods and services may be exempted from gst the rates including floor rates with uh, bands of gst any special rate or rates for a specified period to raise additional resources during any natural calamity or disaster finance commission article 280 provides for a finance commission as a quasi judicial body it is constituted by the president every fifth year or even earlier it is required to make uh, recommendations to the president on the following matters the distribution of the next net pro- proceeds of uh, taxes to be shared between the center and the states and the allocation between the states the respective shares of such uh, proceeds the principles which should govern the grants in aid to the states by the center that is out of the consolidated fund of india the measures needed to augment the consolidated fund of a state to supplement the resources of the panchayats and the municipalities in the state on the basis of the recommendations made by the state finance commission any other matter referred to it by the president in the interests of sound finance till 1960 the commission also suggested the amounts paid to the states of assam bihar orissa and west bengal in lieu of assignment of any share of the net proceeds in each year of export duty on jute and jute products the constitution envisages the finance commissions as the balancing wheel of physical federalism in india protection of the state's interest to protect the interest of a state in the financial matters the constitution lays down that the following bill bills can be introduced in the parliament only on the recommendation of the president a bill which imposes or varies any taxes or duty in which states are interested a bill which varies the meaning of the expression agriculture income as defined for the purposes of the enactments relating to indian income tax a bill which affects the principles on which monies are to or be may be distribu- distributable to states and a bill which imposes any surcharge on any specified tax or duty for the purpose of the center the expression tax or duty in which states are interested means a tax or duty the whole or part of the net proceeds whereof are assigned to any state or a tax or duty by reference to the net proceeds whereof sums are for the time beginning payable out of the consolidated fund of um, india to any state the price net proceeds mean, means the proceeds of a tax or a duty minus the cost of um, collection the net proceeds of a tax or a duty in any area is to be ascertained and certified by the comptroller and auditor general of india his certificate is final borrowing by the center and the states the constitution makes the following provisions with regard to the borrowing powers of the center and the states the central government can borrow either within india or outside upon the security of the consolidation consolidated fund of india or can give guarantees but both within the limits fixed by the parliament so so far no such law has been enacted by the parliament similarly a state government can borrow within india and not abroad upon the security of the consolidated fund of the 
state or can give guarantees but both within the limits fixed by the legislator of the state legislator of that state the central government can make loans to any state or give guarantees in respect of loans raised by any state any sums required for the purpose of making such loans are to be charged on the consolidated fund of india a state cannot raise any loan without the consent of the center if there is still outstanding any part of a loan made to the state by the center or in respect of which a guarantee has been given by the center intergovernmental tax immunities like any other federal constitution the indian constitution also contain the rule of immunity from mutual taxation and makes the following provisions in this regard exemption of central property from state taxation the property of center center is exempted from all taxes imposed by a state or any authority within a state like municipalities district boards panchayats and so on but the parliament is empowered to remove this ban the word property includes lands buildings chattels shares debts everything that has a money value and every kind of property movable or immovable and tangible or intangible further the property may be used for subversion like armed forces or commercial purposes the corporation or the companies created by the central government are not immune from state taxation or local taxation the reason is that a corporation or a company is a separate legal entity exemption of state property or income from central taxation the property and income of a state is exempted from central taxation such income may be derived from subversion functions or commercial functions but the center can tax the commercial operations of a state of parliament so provides however the parliament can declare any particular trade or business as incidental to the ordinary functions of the government and it would then not be taxable not only the property and income of local authorities situated within a state are not exempted from the central taxation similarly the property or income of corporations and companies owned by a state can be taxed by the center the supreme court in an advisory opinion 1963 held that the immunity granted to a state in respect of central taxation does not extend to the duties of customs or duties of excise excise in other words the center can impose customs duty on goods imported or exported by a state or an excise duty on goods produced or manufactured by a state effects of emergencies the center state financial relations in normal times described above undergo changes during emergencies these are as follows national emergency while the proclamation of national emergency under article 352 is in operation the president can modify the constitutional distribution of revenues between the center and the state this means that the president can either reduce or cancel the transfer of finances both tax sharing and grants in aid from the center to the states such modification continues till the end of the financial year in which the emergency ceases to operate financial emergency while the proclamation of financial emergency under article 360 is in operation the center can give directions to the states to observe the specified canons of financial property to reduce the salaries and allowances of all class of persons serving in the state and to reserve all money bills and other financial bills for the consideration of the president articles related to center state of financial relations at a glance article number and subject matter distribution of revenues between the union and the states article 268 duties levied by the union but collected and appropriated by the states 268 a service tax levied by union and collected and appropriated by the union and the states repealed article 269 taxes levied and collected by the union but assigned to the states article 269 a levy and collection of goods and services tax in course of interstate trade or commerce article 270 taxes levied and distributed between the union and the ta- states article 271 surcharge on certain duties and taxes for purpose of the union 
Article 272 taxes which are levied and collected by the union and may be distributed between the union and the states repealed. Article 273 grants in lieu of export duty on jute and jute products. Article 274 prior recommendation of president required to bills affecting taxation in which states are interested. Article 275 grants from the union to certain states. Article 276 taxes on profession, trades, callings and payments. Article 277 savings. Article 278 agreement with the states in part B of the first schedule with regard to certain financial matters repealed. Article 279 calculation of net product proceeds etc. Article 279 e goods and services tax council. Article 280 finance commission. Article 281 Recommendations of the Finance Commission and Miscellaneous Financial Provisions 282 Expenditure defrayable by the Union or the State out of its revenues Article 283 Custody etc. of Consolidated Funds Contingency Funds and Monies Credited by to the Public Accounts Article 284 Custody of suitors, deposits and other money received by public servants and courts. Article 285 Exemption of property of the union from state taxation. Article 286 Restrictions as to imposition of tax on the scale or sale or purchase of goods. Article 287 Exemption from taxes on electricity. Article 288 Exemption from taxation by States in respect of water or electricity in certain cases. Article 289 Exemption of property and income of a state from union taxation. Article 219 Adjustment in respect of certain expenses and pensions. Article 298 Annual payment to certain Devaswam funds. Article 291 Privy per sums of rulers repealed. Borrowing. Article 292 Borrowing by the Government of India Article 293 Borrowing by States Trends in Center State Relations Till 1967, the Center State Relations by an large were smooth due to one party rule at the center and in most of the states. In 1967 elections, the Congress party was defeated in nine states and its position at the center became weak. This changed political scenario heralded a new era in the center state relations the non congress governments in the states opposed the increasing centralization and intervention of the local central government they raised the issue of state autonomy and demanded more powers and financial resources to the states this caused tensions and conflicts in center state relations tension areas in center state relations the issue which created tensions and conflicts between the center and states are mode of appointment and dismissal of governor, discriminatory and partition role of governors, imposition of president's, president's rule for partition interests, de depolyment of central forces in the states to maintain law and order, reservations of state bills for the consideration of the president, discrimination of financial allocations of the states, role of planning commission in approving state projects, Management of All India Services IAS, IPS and IFOS Use of Electronic Media for Political Purposes Appointment of Inquiry Commission against the Chief Ministers Sharing of finance between, Finances between Centre and States and Encroachment by the Centre on the State List The issues in Centre-State relations have been under consideration since the mid 1960s in this direction the following developments have taken place administrative reforms commission the central government appointed him six members first administrative reforms commission arc of india in 1966 under the chairmanship of morarji deshai followed by k hanumathaya its terms of references included among others the examination of central state relations in order to examine thoroughly the various issues in center state relations, the ARC constituted a study team under MC Settlewad on the basis of the report of this study team and ARC finalized its uh, own report and submitted it, it to the central government in 1969. It made 22 recommendations for improving the center state relations. The important recommendations are 
establishment of an interstate council under article 263 of the constitution appointment of persons having long, long experience in public life and administration and non partitions attitude as governors delegations of powers to the maximum extent to the states transferring of more financial resources to the states to reduce their dependency upon the center deployment of uh, central armed forces in the states either on their request or otherwise no action was taken by the central government on the recommendations of the arc rajmanar committee in 1969 the tamil nadu government dmk appointed appointed a three member committee under the chairmanship of dr pv rajmanar to examine the entire question of center state relations and to suggest amendments to the constitution so as to secure utmost autonomy to the states the committee submitted its report to the tamil nadu government in 1971 the committee identified the reasons for the prevailing unitary trends tendencies of centralization in the country they include certain provisions in the constitution which confer special powers on the center one party rule both at the center and in the states in advocacy of states physical resources and consequent dependence on the center for financial assistance and the institution of central planning and the role of the planning commission the important recommendations of the committee are as follows an interstate council should be set up immediately finance commission should be made a permanent body planning commission should be disbanded and its place should be taken by a statutory body article 356 357 and 365 dealing with the president's rule should be totally omitted the provisions that the state ministry holds office during the pleasure of the governor should be omitted certain subjects of the union list and the concurrent list should be transferred to the state list the residuary powers should be allocated to the states and all india services ias ips and fos should be abolished the central government completely ignored the recommendations of the rajmanar committee anandpur sahib resolution in 1973 the ally the akli dal adopted a resolution containing both political and religious demands in a meeting held at anandpur sahib in punjab the resolution generally known as Anandpur Sahib resolution demanded that the center's uh, jurisdiction should be restricted only to defense foreign affairs communications and the currency and the entire residuary power should be vested in the states it stated that the constitution should be made federal in the real sense and should ensure equal authority and representation to all the states at the center west bengal west bengal memorandum in 1977 the west bengal government uh, led by the communist uh, published a memorandum on center state relations and sent to the central government the memorandum inter alia suggested the following the word union in the constitution should be replaced by the word federal the jurisdiction of the center should be confined to defense foreign affairs currency communications and economic coordination all other subjects including the residuary should be vested in the states articles 365 and 357 president's rule and 360 financial emergency should be repealed states consent should be made obligatory for formation of new states or reorganizations of exist existing states of the total revenue raised by the center from all sources 75% should be allocated to the states Rajya Sabha should have equal powers with that of the Lok Sabha and there should be only central and state services and the all India services should be abolished. The central government did not accept the demands made in the memorandum. Sarkaria Commission In 1983, the central government appointed a three-member commission on central state relations under the chairmanship of R.S. Sarkaria. a retired judge of the supreme court the commission was asked to examine and review the working of existing arrangements between the center and states in all spheres and recommended appropriate changes and measures it was initially given one year to complete its work but its uh, terms was extended four times it submitted its uh, 
report in 1988 the commission did not favor structural change and regarded the existing constitutional arrangements and principles relating to the institutions basically sound but it emphasized on the needs for changes in the functional or operational aspects it observed that uh, federalism is more a functional arrangement for cooperation action than a static institutional concept it uh, outrightly rejected the demand for curtailing the powers of the center and state that a strong center is essential to safeguard the national unity and integrity which is being threatened by the fissiparious tendencies in threatened by the fissiparious tendencies tendencies in the body politic however it did not equate strong center with the centralization of powers it observed that over centralization leads to blood pressure at the center and anemia at the periphery the commission made 247 recommendations to improve center state relations the important recommendations are mentioned below a permanent in inter state council called the intergovernmental council should be set up under article 263 Article 356 president's rule should be used very sparingly in extreme cases as a last resort when all the available alternative alternatives fail the institutions of all india services should be further strengthened and some more such services should be created the residuary powers of taxation should continue to remain with the parliament while the other residuary powers should be placed in the concurrent list when the president withholds his assent to the state bills the reason should be communicated to the state government the national development council ndc should be renamed and reconstituted as a national economic and development council nuc nedc the zonal councils should be constituted afresh and reactivated to promote the spirit of federalism the center should have powers to deploy its armed forces even without the consent of states however it is desirable that the state should be consulted the center should consult the states before making a law on a subject of the concurrent list the procedure of consulting the chief minister in the appointment of the state governor should be prescribed in the constitution itself the net proceeds of the corporation tax may be made permissibly shareable with the states the governor cannot dismiss the council of ministers so long as it's a it commands a majority in the assembly the governor's term of 5 years in the state should not be disturbed except for some extremely compelling reasons no commission of inquiry should be set up against a state minister unless he demand is made by the parliament the surcharge on income tax should not be levied by the center except for the specific purpose and for a strictly limited period the present division of functions between the finance commission and the planning commission is reasonable and should continue steps should be taken to uniformly implement the three language formula in its true spirit no autonomy for radio and television but decentralization in their operations no change in the role of rajya sabha and center center's power to reorganize the states the commissioner for linguistic minority should be activated the central government has implemented 180 out of 247 recommendations of the sarkaria commission the most important is the establishment of the interstate council in 1990 panchi commission the second commission on central state relations was set up by the government of india in april 2007 under the chairmanship of madan mohan panchi former chief justice of india it was required to look into the issues of central state relations keeping in view the sea changes that have taken place in the polity and economy of india since the sarkaria commission has had last looked at the issue of central state relations over two decades ago the terms of reference of the commission were as follows the commission was required to examine and review the working of the existing arrangements between the union and states as uh, per the constitution of india the healthy precedents being followed various uh, pronouncements of the courts in regard to power 
functions and responsibilities in all spheres including legislative relations administrative relations role of governors emergency provisions financial relations economic and social planning panchayati raj institutions sharing of resources including interstate river water and recommended recommend such a changes or other measures as may be appropriate keeping in view the practical difficulties in examining and reviewing the working of the existing arrangements between the union and state and making recommendations as to the changes and measures needed the commission was required to keep in view the social and economic developments that have taken place over the years particularly over the last two decades and have due regard to the scheme and framework of the constitution such recommendations were also needed to address the growing challenges of uh, ensuring good governance for promoting the welfare of the people which strengthening the unity and integrity of the country and of availing emerging opportunities for sustained and rapid economic growth for alleviating pover- poverty and illiteracy in the early decades of the new millennium while examining and making its recommendations on the above the commission was commission was required to have particular regard but not limit its mandate to the following the role responsibility and jurisdiction of the center vis a vis state during major and prolonged outbreaks of communal violence caste violence or any other social conflict leading to prolonged and escalated violence the role responsibility and jurisdiction of the center vis a vis states in the planning and uh, implementation of the mega projects like the interlinking of rivers that would normally take 15 to 20 years for completion and hinge vitally on the support of the states the role responsibility and jurisdiction of the center vis a vis states in promoting effective devolution of powers and autonomy to panchayati raj institutions and local bodies including the autonomous bodies under the 6th schedule of the constitution within a specified period of time the role responsibility and jurisdiction of the center vis a vis states in promoting the concept and practice of independent planning and budgeting at the district level the role responsibility and jurisdiction of the center vis a vis states in linking central assistance of various kinds with the performance of the states the role responsibility and jurisdiction of the center in adopting approaches and policies based on positive discrimination in favor of backward states the impact of the recommendations made by the 8th to 12th finance commissions on the physical relations between the center and the states especially the great dependence of the states on devolution of funds from the center the need and relevance of separate taxes on the production on the on the sales of goods and services uh, substantive to the introduction of value added uh, tax rigam the need for freeing interstate trade in order to establish a unified and integrated domestic market as also in the context of the reluctance of state governments to adopt the relevant sarkaria commission's recommendations in chapter 18 of this report 18 of its uh, report the need for setting up a central law enforcement agency empowered to take up co moto investigation of uh, crimes having interstate and or international ramifications with the serious implications on national security the feasibility of a supporting legislation under article 355 for the purpose of co moto de- deploy deployment of uh, central forces in the states so if and when the situation so demands the commission submitted its report to the government in april 2010 in finalizing the 1456 page report in seven volumes the commission took extensive help from the sarkaria commission report the national commission to review the working of the constitution ncrwc report and the second administrative reforms commission report however in a number of areas the commission report differed from the sarkaria commission recommendations after examining at length the issues raised in its terms of reference and the related aspect in all their hues and shades the commission came to the conclusion that cooperative federalism 
will be the key for sustaining India's unity, integrity and social and economic development in future. The principles of cooperative federalism thus may have to act as a practical guide for Indian polity and governance. In all the commission, commission made over 310 recommendations touching upon several significant areas in the working of center state relations, the important recommendations are mentioned below. To facilitate effective implementations of the laws on list three subjects, it is necessary that some broad agreement is reached between the union and states before introducing legislation in parliament on matters in the concurrent list. The union should be extremely restrained in asserting parliamentary supremacy in matters assigned to the states, greater flexibility to states in relation to subjects in the state list and transferred items in the concurrent list is the key for better center state relations. The union should occupy only that many of subjects in concurrent or overlapping jurisdiction which are absolutely necessary to achieve uniformity of policy in demonstrable national interest. There should be a continuing auditing role for the interstate council in the management of matters in concurrent or overlapping jurisdiction. The period of six months prescribed in Article 201 for state legislator to act when the bill is returned by the president can be made applicable for the president also to decide on assenting or withholding assent to a state bill reserved for consideration of the president. Parliament should make a law on the subject of entry portion of list one treaty ma making and implementing in through parliamentary legislation to strengthen the procedures involved. The exercise of the power obviously cannot be absolute or uncharted in view of the federal structure of legislative and executive powers. Financial obligations and its implications on state finances arising out of our treaties and agreements should be a permanent term of references to the finance commission constituted from time to time. While selecting governors, the central government should adopt the following strict guidelines as recommended in the Sarkaria Commission reported and follow its mandate in letter and spirit. He should be eminent in some walk of life. He should be a person from outside the state. He should be a detected figure and not too intimately connected with the local politics of the state. He should be a person who has not taken too great a part in politics generally and particularly in the recent past. Governor should be given a fixed tenure of five years and their removal should not be at the sweet will of the governor, government at the center. The procedure laid down for impeachment of President Mutatis Mutandis can be made applicable for impeachment of governors as well. Article 163 does not give the governor a general discretion discriminatory power to act against all without the advice of his council of ministers. In fact, the area for the exercise of discrimination is limited and even in this limited area, his choice of action should not be arbitrary or fanciful. It must be a choice dictated by reason, activated by good faith and tempered by caution. In respect of bills passed by the Legislative Assembly of a state, the governor should take the decision within six months whether, the, whether to grant assent or to reserve it for consideration of the president. On the question of governor's role in appointment of chief minister in the case of an hung assembly, it is necessary to lay down certain clear guide, guidelines to be followed as constitutional conventions. These guidelines may be as follows. The party or combination of parties which commands the widest support in the legislative assembly should be called upon to form the government. If there is a pre-poll alliance or coalition, it should be treated as one political party and if such coalition ob obtains a majority, the leader of such coalition shall be called by the governor to form the government. In case no party or pre-poll coalition has a clear majority, the governor should select the chief minister in the order of a preference indicated here. The group of parties which had pre-poll aliens commanding the largest number. The largest single party stocking a claim to form the government with the support of others. A post-electoral coalition with all 
partners joining the government a post electoral alliance with some parties joining the government and the remaining including independents supporting the government from outside on the question of dismiss dismissal of a chief minister the governor should invariably insist on the chief minister proving his majority on the floor of the house for which he should prescribe a time limit the governor should have the right to sanction for prosecution of a state minister against the advice of the council of ministers if the cabinet decision appears to the governor to be motivated by bias in the face of overwhelming material the convention of governors acting as chancellors of universities and holding other statutory positions should be done away with his role should be confined to the constitutional provisions only when an external aggregation or internal disturbance pa- paralyzes the state administration creating a situation of a potential breakdown of the constitutional machinery of the state all alternative courses available to the union for discharging its uh, paramount responsibility under article 355 should be exhausted to contain the situation and the exercise of the power under article 356 should be limited strictly to rectifying a failure of the constitutional machinery in the state on the question of uh, invoking article 356 in case of failure of constitutional machinery in states suitable amendments are required to incorporate the guidelines set forth the set forth in the landmark judgment of the supreme court in sr bombay versus union of india 1994 this would remove possible misgivings in this regard on the part of states and help in smoothening center state relations given the strict parameters now set for invoking the emergency provisions under article 352 and 356 to be used only as a measure of last resort and the duty of the union to protect states under article 355 it is necessary to provide a cons- constitutional or legal framework to deal with situations which require central intervention but uh, do not warrant invoking the extreme steps under article 352 and 356 provoking the providing the framework for local localized emergency would ensure that the state government can continue to function and the assembly would not have to be dissolved while providing a mechanism to let the central a government respond to the issue specifically and locally the imposition of local emergency is fully justified under the mandate of article 355 read with entry 2a of list 1 and entry 1 of list 2 of the seventh schedule suitable amendments to article 263 are required to make the interstate council a credible powerful and fair mechanism for management of in interstate and center state differences the zonal councils should meet at least uh, twice a year with an agenda proposed by states concerned to maximize the uh, coordination and promote uh, harmonization of uh, policies and action having interstate uh, ramification the secretariat secretariat of a strengthened interstate council can function as the secretariat of the zonal councils as well the empowered committees of finance ministers of uh, states provide to be a successful experiment in interstate uh, coordination on physical matters there is need to institutionalize uh, similar models in other sectors as well a forum of chief minister shared by one of the chief minister by rotation can be similarly to about particularly to coordinate policies of sectors like energy food education environment and health new all india services in sectors like health education engineering and judiciary should be created factors in inhi- inhibiting the composition and functioning of the second chamber as a representative form of states should be removed or modified even if it requires amendment of the constitutional provisions in fact rajya sabha offers immense potential to negotiate acceptable solutions to the friction points which emerge between center and states in physical legislative and administrative relations a balance of power between states inter interest inters in uh, inters is desirable and this is possible by equality of uh, representation in the rajya sabha this requires amendment of the relevant provisions to give equality of uh, seats to states in the rajya sabha irrespective of their population size the scope of devolution of powers to local bodies to act as institutions of self government should be continuously constitutionally 
defined through appropriate amendments all future central legislations invoke involving states involvement should provide for cost charge sharing as in the case of the rt act existing central legislation where the states are interested with the responsibility of implementation should be suitably amended providing for sharing of costs by the central government the royal the royalty rates on major minerals should be revised at least every 3 years without any delay states should should be properly compensated for any delay in the revision of royal beyond 3 years the current ceiling on profession tax should be completely done away with by a constitutional amendment the scope for raising more revenue for, from the taxes mentioned in article 268 should be examined afresh the issue may be either referred to the next finance commission or an except expert committee be appointed to look into the matter the bring greater accountability all physical legislation should provide for an annual assessment by an independent body and the reports of these bodies should be laid in both houses of parliament state legislature consideration specified in the terms of reference tor of the finance commission should be even handed as between the center and the states there should be an effective mechanism in involve the states in the final finalization to the of the tivo or of the finance commission the central government should review all the existing cesses and surcharges with a view to bringing down their share in the gross tax revenue because of the close linkages between the plan and non plan expense an expert committee may be appointed to look into the issue of distinction between the plan and non plan expense there should be much better coordination between the finance commission and and the planning commission the synchronization of the periods covered by the finance commission and the five year plan will considerably improve such coordination the finance commission division in the ministry of finance should be converted into a full fledged department serving as the permanent secretary for the finance commissions the planning commissions has a crucial role in the current situation but its role should be that of coordination rather than that of micromanaging sectoral plans of the central ministers and the states steps should be taken for the steps should be taken for the setting up of an interstate trade and commerce commission under article 307 read with entry 42 of list 1 this commission should be vested with the body advisory and executive roles with the decision making powers as a constitutional body the decision of the commission should be final and binding on all states as well as the union of india any party aggrieved with the decision of the commission may prefer an appeal to the supreme court the report of this commission was circulated to all stakeholders including state governments and ut administrations and union ministers departments considered for their considered views on the recommendations of the commissions the comments received from the union ministers union ministries departments and the state governments by ut administrations are under the consideration of the interstate council notes and references even now the last entry is numbered as 97 but the total number of entries is 98 the entries number numbered as 2a 92a and 92b have been added and uh, entire 32 92 and 92c has been have been omitted even now the last entry is numbered as 66 but the total number of entries is 59 the entries numbered as 11 19 20 29 36 52 and 55 have been omitted even now the last entry is numbered as 47 but the total number of entries is 52 the entries numbered as 11a 17a 17b 20a and 33a have been added the provisions for goods and services tax was added by the 101st amendment act of 2016 Report of the Commission on Centre State Relations Part 1 Government of India For example under the Essential Commodities Act made by the Parliament on a concurrent subject the executive power is vested in the centre this provision the power of the states to 
entrenched functions to the center was added by the Seventh Constitutional Amendment Act of 1956. Before that, only the center had the power. Constant Assembly debates. Entries 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, A, 92, B, and 96. In this regard, the 101st Amendment Act of 2016 inserted Article 246A in the Constitution. Originally, this limit was only 250 per annum. The 60th Amendment Act of 1988 resulted it to 2500 rupees per annum. These provisions are contained in Article 286 as amended by the 101st Amendment Act of 2016. This amendment uh, deleted Article 272 taxes which were which are levied and collected by the center and may be distributed between the center and the states. Entry 52 taxes on the entry of goods into a local area for consumption, use of sale therein and entry 55 taxes on advertisements other than uh, Advertisements published in the newspaper and advertisements broadcast by radio or television were omitted by the 101st Amendment Act of 2016. MP Jain, Indian Constitutional Law, Vadva, 4th edition. Article 279A, Clause 1 says that the President shall, within 60 days from the Commencement of the Constitution, 101st Amendment Act 2016 by order constitute a council to be called the Goods and Services Tax Council. This function was added by the 73rd and 74th Amendment Act of 1992 which have granted constitutional status on the panchayats and the municipalities respectively. In RECA Customs Act 1963, the other two members of the committee were Dr. Lakshman Swami. Mudhalyar and P. C. Chandra Reddy. B. Sivaraman and S. R. Sen were two other members of the commission. The other four members of the commission were Dhirendra Singh, former secretary to the government of India, Vinod Kumar Duggal, former, former secretary to the government of India, Professor N. R. Madhavan Meenan, former director, National Judicial Academy, Bhopal and National Law School of India, Bangalore and Dr. Amresh Bagchi, Emeritus Professor, National Institute of Public Finance and Policy, New Delhi. With the passing away of Dr. Bagchi in February 2008, Vijay Shankar, former Director Central Bureau of Investigation, Government of India was appointed in his place as a member of the Commission in October 2008. Annual Report 2018-19 Ministry of Home Affairs, Government of India, page 52. Thank you.